And most most of you that are accounting professionals, you know this by heart. You you took many tests <laughs> in school um, that require you to know this. And um, and uh, it, it, but, but I find that many people, many times, even accountants forget this. Okay, your ending inventory balance should always be your beginning inventory balance plus purchases minus cost of goods sold. You also need to know and understand that purchases are driven from item receipts, bills, checks, and credit card charges. Purchase orders are not going to drive purchases. Journal entries are not going to uh, drive uh, purchases. And cost of goods sold are driven by invoices and sales receipts. Uh, you can use inventory assembly to adjust your cost of goods sold which we just did, we did an inventory adjustment to adjust the cost of goods sold. But you need to understand which transactions drive uh, the purchase amount, the cost of goods sold account, and eventually the ending inventory. At any point in time that you're looking at your balance sheet and your inventory valuation are not the same, somebody mucked with it, right? Somebody messed with it and it's causing your inventory to be off. Now, inventory being off is the number one issue that QuickBooks users have in manufacturing and wholesale. I, I would, you can ask any QuickBooks consultant, you can ask any business owner of a manufacturing and wholesale business, hey, what don't you like about uh, your QuickBooks is that I can never trust my inventory. So inventory is off means it's always either overstated or understated. Uh, in some cases, in, somebody will have inventory to be off and the value that's off uh, that's overstated and the value that's off overstated kind of cancel each other out. And at the end of the day, the financial statements are okay. Um, however, there's individual issues when it comes to analyzing the specific products that you have in stock. Now, if your inventory is overstated, what are some direct causes? Well, you can be having missing invoices that are supposed to reduce that inventory. Maybe you use the wrong item on an invoice or use a non-inventory part instead of a non-inventory part on an invoice. I would say those are the two most common uh, direct causes for having uh, inventory overstated because you're basically missing the transactions that would reduce that inventory. And of course, not making timely adjustments, not adjusting your inventory could cause your inventory to be overstated. The effect that overstated valuation has is your net income and your gross margins are overstated. What are the negative effects of having net income overstated? Well, you're going to pay more income taxes. That's probably the most obvious one. What is the negative effect of having your gross margins overstated? You could probably have overconfident salespeople giving people more discounts or getting more aggressive in pricing because their financial statements, their numbers are telling them that they have really good gross margins and they can compete by lowering the price. But what's going to end up happening is you might end up losing money on some of these deals because you are overconfident about your gross margins. So although uh, there are some positive things for your net income to be overstated and your uh, inventory value to be overstated, which could cause an investor or a bank to probably lend you more money or, or have more confidence in your business because it looks like you're richer than what you really are. However, I think the net effects, uh, the negative effects are worse. Now, what happens if your inventory is understated? That means that QuickBooks is showing less inventory than one you really have. But what's happening with that? Well, you, that probably was caused by you, by you not entering bills or item receipts for certain items. Very typical. People will just have a purchase order and, and forget to enter the bill or pay the vendor and send it to some sort of cost of goods all account and never really bring the inventory in it. Uh, using the wrong items in a bill or using a non-inventory items in a bill that could cause your inventory to be understated and obviously not making inventory adjustments, which applies to both. Now, what is the effect of your net income being understated? Well, if your net income is understated, you're probably paying less taxes than you that you need to. A lot of people would say see that as a positive, but if you get audited, you're going to get nailed on the audit. Uh, two, your gross margin is going to feel much tighter. So, if you think your gross margins are small already, you're not going to give anybody any discount. You're not going to be competitive in pricing and you can lose some deals in the fear of losing money on, on your sales because your gross margins 
are understated. So you can have the negative effect on both. Also, if you're looking to get financing or bring investors in or get a loan or whatever, and they're looking at your inventory value and they're looking at your net profit, if you're understating your your inventory and your net income, that can have some negative effects for that. Now, how to quickly know that your inventory is off? Like, how do you quickly know that? Well, the easiest way to know is you look at your inventory evaluation summary, you look at your balance sheet. If they don't agree, you know for a fact something's wrong, period. And the other thing is you want to look at the inventory asset value in your valuation summary, and you want to check for gut feeling. Does this feel right, right? Like, I'm looking at the valuation report and I'm thinking, I can't have this much value in inventory. That's impossible. So if it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. Okay, so those are the two things that allow you to quickly know that inventory is off. Now, what are the specific actions that the user took that caused this problem? Well, number one, probably the most typical, is somebody will do a journal entry affecting your inventory asset. Okay, let's do an example of that just so we can illustrate exactly uh, what problems that would cause. So let me go ahead and pull up my inventory valuation summary. I'm going to pick all dates and then I'm going to run my balance sheet. And I'll also pick all dates. I'm going to go ahead and go to window, tile vertically. Then I'm going to collapse, collapse this nef- left navigation bar, tile vertically again so we can see it. So my asset value is 107800 according to my inventory valuation summary. This is where you run a quick gut check, right? Does that, does that number feel right? Okay. And then two, you want to make sure that the inventory asset value in the balance sheet matches. What a lot of people do, and these are, and I, and I have to say it this way because it's the only way to say it. The dumb accountants, the dumb accountants do this all the time. The dummy accountants that are, are only looking in like sort of this myopic view to say, look, I just got to get QuickBooks right so I can get the tax return done. And my customer's telling me that inventory is 50,000. So I need to adjust inventory value and make it 50,000, period, move on. And I understand why you would do that. As a matter of fact, I've been that dumb accountant many times, mostly because my customer is not paying me to audit their inventory for that particular use case. But causing this is going to have some major issues in the long run of having uh, of of your inventory value. So if I go to my inventory asset and I reduce my inventory by 57,800 because I want to just make sure that my balance sheet shows 50,000 in my inventory asset, right? And I run that against uh, my cost of goods sold account, whichever one happens to be, and I click on save. Okay, I could probably comply with having my clean balance sheet that shows my clean inventory asset of that random number the client gave me that they pulled out of a hat of 50,000. So great. So you made your financial statements work. But the problem is that now at any point in time, you're going to pull up your balance sheet and your inventory evaluation report, and you're going to see that both these numbers are off. When these numbers are off, automatically your inventory is off. So you can do your gut check on inventory valuation report. And if your gut check tells you that's okay, then your duty is to reverse uh, the actions taken by the previous accountant and make your inventory asset always match your inventory valuation report. If the end user, the business owner, is looking at this and says, no, it's 50000 for sure. I know for a fact it's 50000 Then that person needs to do the exercise of figuring out what combination of adjustments I need to do inside of my valuation report to then make it work for 50000 So you have to make the actual adjustments to the actual units that will get you closer to that 50,000 so you cannot have, uh, so you can stop having that discrepancy. So I would say that's a number one problem. I uh, would love to know in your comments below if you have experience with this in the chat, what is the number one issue that you see with uh, inventory being off? I think that making journal entries to inventory asset is the number one problem. Number two, most common is when you make an inventory adjustment. I mentioned this earlier. You make an inventory adjustment and instead of using a cost of goods sold account to make the adjustment, they use the same inventory asset account to make the adjustment. And basically you're going to be uh, doing, it has no effect. So if you do an inventory adjustment, right? And I, I'm, I'm going to show you that too. If you do an inventory adjustment and you use the same inventory asset account, you're going to have all sorts of issues. So we're going to have an episode where we talk about inventory 
troubleshooting where we're going to cover this specific issue and how to fix it. Okay. Also, we can have issue with inactivated inventory items. So sometimes people will inactivate an inventory item and it doesn't show up in the uh, valuation report. I'll show you this one. That's a really good example to use just because it's a pretty common uh, use case. So let's say, for example, I'm looking at my inventory valuation report. It's 107,800. But if someone goes into the item list and decides to willingly say, you know what? I don't have any more RM1s. Let me just get rid of it by right clicking and deleting. And then QuickBooks says, look, you can delete it because it's got a quantity, but you can make it uh, inactive anyway. And then you completely ignore that it's saying that your valuation is going to be off. So you click on make inactive and then you make it inactive. Okay. Make it inactive completely. When I go back into my uh, re valuation report, now my asset value is off. So you looked for it, right? You, you did this problem. You created this problem by making the inventory, uh, a specific inventory inactive. Now, Dave, in QuickBooks Enterprise, no, QuickBooks Desktop, both Pro Premier and Enterprise 2019, they fixed this issue by having a little checkbox here that says show inactive inventory items. So that inactive issue is no longer a major issue. As long as you check that box, then you can reverse the effects of making an inventory item inactive. However, in my opinion, you should always be searching your item list. You go into your item list and uh, go to where it says include inactive and sort it by the inactive ones. And then you wanna go through the, the, the list of all the inactive ones and spot any that effectively have a quantity because if an item has been inactive, the end user probably, probably, uh, doesn't have any more of the item in stock and they're trying to remove it from the visibility because they don't want to see it anymore. It bothers them. However, if it's showing a quantity in stock, it's probably showing a value in stock. So it's really, really important that you, um, that you basically, um, go back and adjust that to zero, uh, if you want to keep that inactive. So it's a bit of a troubleshooting that we have to do. We'll talk about in the troubleshooting, uh, in the troubleshooting episode, we'll talk about that. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the next couple items here, which is using the wrong units of measure on transactions. Very typical when someone has multiple units of measure where they buy by the unit, by the dozen, by the 50 unit box or whatever, right? Or by the pound, by the gram, all those things. What ends up happening is they don't pay close attention to the, first of all, to the unit of measure setup make sure the numbers are accurate. And then second, when they go purchase it, they don't pay attention to that unit of measure. And then they overbuy uh, uh, units based on the unit of measure or the underbuy on the user wrong unit of measure. That's actually a very typical thing. In manufacturing, unit of measure is probably one of the most important things that people need to learn first before even touching uh, QuickBooks. Then obviously we talked about this earlier, using the wrong items in a transaction because they're similarly named. That's also a very typical uh, cause of an inventory valuation issue. Negative quantity on value uh, items. So if your items are negative in, qu in quantity, uh, they're also going to cause QuickBooks to do all sorts of weird calculations f into cost of goods sold and inventory asset. So you want to make sure that you never have any quant negative inventory uh quantities. Um, and then there's a really weird, strange one, which is QuickBooks doesn't have a control mechanism for leaving inventory items in stock. Sorry, having inventory items that are not in stock, but still retain a balance in the valuation report. It's a really weird, strange thing. And let me show you that example. And then we'll probably discuss more in the troubleshooting session of that. But it's just really, really interesting that QuickBooks can do this. Um, I'm going to do an inventory valuation adjustment and I'm going to adjust this one that called finished goods. So I'm going to go into finished goods. Okay. I'm going to do a quantity and value adjustment. I'm going to do a quantity of zero, but then under new value, I'm going to put 5,000. Okay. Don't ask how this works, but QuickBooks can actually do this. You can actually have zero of a unit, but still have value of the unit in your valuation report. And this is one of the craziest things 
in the world of QuickBooks. Now, sometimes, anytime anybody does a value adjustment, they can potentially cost if this problem. I've never seen somebody actually do this on purpose, but I, I have seen the net result where you have zero uh, quantity on hand and a value adjustment. So typically what I do is I'll export this to Excel and then I'll run a couple of formulas to see, hey, is there any column that says zero on, their qu uh, on hand, but still says some sort of value on their asset value? And I filter those and then go back into QuickBooks and I literally just adjust the value down back to zero.